we're going to do is we're going to look at the same exact snake that Gianni was looking at in the famous... She's going to come out. Oh no, I didn't do it right. Did she pick your food, Gianni? Relax. Relax. Chill out. I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional. I do this every time. Oh! oh my god! Oh, she's heavy. She's heavy? Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I'm a trained professional. <laughs> God damn it! And she reacted differently. That would never happen to Kevin. I hope you know that. Kevin would never get bit in the chest. It's all learning. You have to just go through it over and over and over again. And she's a, she's a little defensive. Nub is even is? more defensive, oh. and yes, she's a big. Source. I'm a professional. Exactly. So we're gonna look at the same thing. We're actually just gonna cover a couple things uh, that I think that he did that were incorrect. He certainly learned from this. is actually a great learning opportunity. And I'm just gonna revisit this once again to just kind of outline what you should do, what you shouldn't do, and try not to make uh, the same kind of mistakes. And actually learning uh, the behaviors of the animals. And you need to have a certain, um, whenever you're keeping a larger constrictor that could inflict any kind of bodily damage, like a, a bite or wrap you up or whatever. <laughs> you basically want to have respect. And that comes down to techniques. There's certain rules you need to practice by. Same thing with the, with a dog. I wouldn't look at a dog and go over it as it's eating its food out of its dish and like start growling at it. Same thing with a big snake. These guys live in modes. So I need to make sure, first thing I need to make sure, it doesn't think it's food. So I have to get it out of the feeding mode and I have to get it into thinking mode. So we'll do that. If I were to immediately open this door and present myself, my face, this animal, okay, so the animal just woke up. So right now, I don't have anything protecting me from this animal lunging out. So these animals, they're ambush hunters, and they're also active foragers. So they'll sometimes sit here sleeping, and if I enter the cage without using my brain, and I present myself, potentially the snake can be mistaken that I am food and not just you know somebody who's gonna mess with it. And it makes a mistake and kind of grabs you thinking it's secured food when in fact it's just, you know, acting on instinct. So at this point, it's on the snake right there. The snake just totally changed. Now the snake knows this is not a food opportunity. So rule one, do not have the animal think you are food. What he did, he brought his face down to it. And the animal squared up. She's gonna come out. So what you're doing is, if I'm sitting here staring at the animal, and the animal is looking back at me, and, let the, and I let the animal kind of zero in on you, and if the animal's defensive, so the animal feels like, oh, you're invading my space, and it's kind of worried, and I'm coming at it with my, my eyes, sometimes those are things that are gonna trigger an animal. So we don't wanna do that. So what I do is I don't want to enter the snake's cage where the animal's looking at me. I usually wanna get it moving away, looking away, something like that. It's gonna bring down the stress. There is some stress from my eyes when I'm looking right at it. These guys are very keyed in on eyes. Just like the cobra would be keyed on eyes. Same same deal. Retics are really reactive, highly intelligent animals. They're, they're very aware of a lot of things. And so sometimes we can easily overlook that. So I will not present myself to this animal and allow this animal to square up. So I take this down. She already knows that I'm not food. but. I don't want to, she's not aimed at me. She's being quite good. Now we're good. So she might flinch a little bit. So this is, as we've talked about, this is a reactive animal. This is a uh, ivory retex, so this is a super platinum. And some of these guys, they can just be a bit nervous. So what I just do is I want to comfortably handle it. And she is a big snake, so this is easily you know, a 16 foot snake. She has no ill will towards me, but she is a little bit insecure, so she's going to want to race. Um, one thing I don't want to do is stick my face in her face. So right now, she's just kind of crawling away. Everything's good. She turned around and was staring me in the face, and I was a bit nervous about her disposition. I wouldn't do that, so I basically work around it. But uh, she's good. Long tongue flicks right now. Everything's fine. So do not present yourself as food. Do not allow the animal to square up and stare at you. Those are things you don't want to do. But other than that, we're good. Behavior of this animal is fine. And I'll just take her. 
you normally work with a person too, right? You don't just like screw around with you by yourself? Well, sure. I would always recommend screwing with my employees. We always have lots of employees in the building. They're within yelling range. Don't worry guys, I'm a trained professional. John. <laughs> John, I can't breathe. Hey John. John, help me. This is why you work in teams of two. And another person is always gonna be good because if an animal like this were to wrap you up, it's not good. This is awesome. It's not good at all. It doesn't happen. We're, uh, this is where I can say we're professionals. Uh, I certainly have worked with all sorts of snakes and stuff like that, so I inherently understand them and read them. But even with my very good skill set, we're always gonna make mistakes, myself included. So I'm gonna be smart. Certainly when I have employees that are learning from me, uh, I cannot expect them to have the same talents that I do or the same abilities to understand snakes. So it's just repetitive and being redundant and going through it over and over again. But literally these are animals that demand respect, but they're very easy to manage when you understand how to do it and besides physically moving them around. If you don't have skills or if you're not comfortable and you don't flow and you don't have uh, the right disposition to deal with these animals, you can actually take a very good snake in many cases and have a bad experience with them. I tend to be able to take really bad snakes and have good experiences with them. You can ask my employees or whatever. Uh, people know me for that. And that is just literally, I have the same hands you do. It's just because how I read them and how I interpret them and how I move with them. So as we calm down, interacting with these animals, being overconfident, uh, being really all like, uh, like spastic, you're gonna do things, you're gonna trigger these animals in the respect that you're gonna basically activate the defensive or fear type reactions, and we don't wanna deal with these animals with that. We wanna deal with these animals when they are thinking. It is all about the states that they're living in. Sleeping, hunting, fear, and thinking. We always wanna play with our animals when they're in thinking mode. And let's not mistake food, feeding mode, because that's when they, they, they get excited, they wanna grab something, and they're like, oh, I just made a mistake. See, hands is what's for dinner. That's a joke. I make fun of that. It's my little thing that I came up with, and it's just, it's like a joke, you know? Just being kind of kind of stupid. But a big animal like this, you don't want to be grabbed. We don't get bit here very often at all. So Gianni's uh, bite was a very minimal defensive bite. That animal was just saying, hey, you're kind of freaking me out. Back off. That's all it was. It was just literally so defensive. And, uh, but it was actually, I really, I think it was a really good experience for everybody just to see it. Certainly my employee, especially because, you know, he's been working with me for about two years now and he's learning. He came to me with no skill set whatsoever. So we're kind of working on that skill set. But uh, this is not something you can just quickly learn. I'm going to take the expert. I'm going to hand over the hook to the professional. <laughs> and uh, I actually, I, I also give Gianni credit, like after it happened. He really collected himself. She's not aggressive, all right? Even though she bit me, I'd bite too if I could have talked to you, and I was nervous. And stuff like that, and it, it happens to anybody. So it's just, you know, it's, it's a really good learning experience. And G knew what he did, like, after he did it, what he did wrong. So that really is basically what's going to make him a seasoned handler. So show me with this, this guy. She's at least uh, nine years old, and we've been feeding her to make her as big as possible. So. This would be an extreme size of one of our calorie ticks. So I'm going to be using this hook right here that's a little bit cooler, obviously. The other one was plastic, so it was kind of warm. No, that's my excuse. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to use this. If it was metal, it'd be a better example. Metal is obviously colder than my hand or a prey item. Uh, my hand is a little bit uh, warmer than a prey item, or as warm. Um, so this is cooler than the air around us, obviously. So I'm going to use it on her. If she was sleeping, obviously wake her up, um, but she's already awake. She's kind of in deep shed, so she still can't see me perfectly. She still kind of sees a little bit of clouds or cloudy figures. Um, so I'm still going, not going to chance it just yet. I'm not going to put my face right up to her, kind of like how I did with this one. I'm still going to, you know, going to show her I'm there, show her I'm not food, kind of like what Kevin was saying. And now that she's on the run, it's safe for me to take her over. That was pretty good. I still saw a couple things I didn't like. But uh, he knows the snake pretty well too. So he knows what he can get away with. Uh, I think that you should use a little bit more uh, hook time with... Uh, What's hook time? This. The, the more, the, a little bit more when she was, uh, when, when was kind of like... 
if, if she was really hungry, he knew that she's going into the shed. He knew she wasn't really in food mode. But if that was a really hungry snake, he probably would have acted a little bit different. So I maybe I'm just like over exaggerating some so let's of try that. Let's try the different one then. No, no, you did great. But you did great. You know this snake, and uh, she's she's a good, reliable snake. And uh, G certainly uh, knows he can do more with her than he can with that ivory retic. Let's do pod retics. That sounds okay. like fun. You want to do pod retics? Yeah. I know what that means. All right. So we do have some genetics with some of the retics. So some of the retics, like pie, pie retics, platinum retics, tend to be a bit more reactive. So when I say reactive, that means when I have a baby and I'm raising it, I need to kind of basically work a little bit harder to convince it that I'm not going to hurt it. So I have some pie retics that I honestly got to admit, I did not put a lot into because uh, they were just some retics I was raising. When I got them, they would bite and pee and all these different kinds of things. But these uh, couple things we're gonna look at right now, they are a little bit reactive, they're a little bit unsure of themselves, and I didn't really, I wasn't really involved in a lot of the day-to-day -day, uh, care of these animals. So their behavior is much more typical of what a pied retic would be. And pied retics tend to be um, a bit nervous, reactive, maybe more prone to biting and peeing on you. So I've noticed like the pied retics that we just hatched out a little while ago, we've been putting some work into them and they're beautiful. Like, so basically with a little bit extra attention at the right stage of life, I got these a little too late maybe to really, you know, like to kind of dictate uh, better uh, handling on my part. So, uh, so she's, they're a little bit more reactive and Gianni's gonna have to be a little bit more on his game and uh, not be uh, so willing to trust every movement of these animals. But they are still very reasonable animals. You can work with them, uh, but you definitely don't wanna let your guard down. You do not wanna let them square up on you. You got that G, that's yeah. like legit. Don't let them square up on you G. I don't want you to get hurt. I don't like that hook. Why don't you like that hook, Kevin? I just, for, for this, use that. Okay. A lot of the times, you, when the, the hook you're using, you're actually, I like to use the end of the hook. This the part, part, the handle. So you see me do that at all. Okay, this animal right there, mm -hmm. just look what she just did. She's very she, reactive. She's she just back. angled her, her head right up. Mm -hmm. That is telling you she's on point. Now you need to react differently. You need to respect this animal a little bit differently than we're going to look at, let's say, like a calorie tech. Donnie, yes. can you see that? She just, see so yeah, how she's angled her head up? Yeah, she's definitely looking at me right now. Okay, so she's angled up her head. She is kind of like ready to maybe explode. Good luck, Diani. Thank you. All right, relax. Drop your other one down. Drop your other one down. Now, make sure you're aware, your face. Make sure you're aware of your face right there. It was bad. All right. Yeah. Good. Ta-da. Very good. Okay, so now G is checking out her tongue flick. So right now, she's herky-jerky, but she's still thinking. Keep going around. All right, so this, see this twirling? This is what I teach everyone. I learned this a long time ago when I'm dealing with wild, when I was dealing with a lot of wild-caught retics. And basically, the, the trick was I was getting retics that came out of the wild and they thought that people were going to like murder them and generally because they were skinning them, they were treating them terribly. So I was getting these horrific uh, animals in from the wild to start with some of the first genes like the first golden child, first phantom stripes, first orange ghost stripes and all that kind of stuff. And all those behaviors of those animals, you have to establish trust. If I grab behind the head and I try to manage the little frustrated animal, I'm not going to build any trust. So what I did was I started to learn how to do this twirling little routine that I do. And this is now key when you're dealing with any kind of animal like this that's a bit nervous. You're not letting her zero in on who's holding her. And you're letting her think she's calming down right now. So G is nailing this. He's doing this very well. Keep turning. Exactly. He's doing on point. This is exactly what I wanted to do. You basically, you're not putting this animal in any bad situation where it feels like it has to bite. She just wants to basically just crawl away and just do stuff. So he's, he did excellent. I'm very, very uh, happy with what he did other than when he first dropped that, that door down a little bit too much of his face within uh, range, but uh, everything else is excellent. All right, 
right, guys, if you like this video and you have things to say, please comment, like, subscribe, hit that little alert button, and also follow us on New England Reptile on Instagram, Evil Morph God on Instagram, certainly on Facebook, New England Reptile, and please listen to our what we have to say, we want to hear your commentary because we are doing more videos. I know it's been a little while since we did a video. We kind of got backed up. But we actually have been filming some stuff. And so just give us a little bit of time, but we have more stuff coming. We're going to be doing some ball python videos shortly because I've been hatching out all sorts of cool ball pythons. And I hope you guys are enjoying this, but please let us know what you're thinking.